Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be decorating for Halloween. <laughs> I am definitely more of a fall girly. I love just the warmth and the coziness of it, but we do have three boys and they love Halloween. So we are going to be, of course, tidying some things up, getting things nice and clean, but then I'm going to actually be pulling down just a few of my fall decor pieces and replacing them with some Halloween style items. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it on a budget and also just some different tricks to make kind of decorating for Halloween or decorating for fall and Halloween at the same time can be pretty easy. Oh, and then I almost forgot, before we're all done with today, I want to share a really yummy treat recipe. It's like very simple, but also kind of Halloween-ish. So let's go ahead and get into it. I wanna hear you say yeah, yeah. Before Noah went to school today, he hid something to get Kyle to do a little practical joke on him. He got a whoopee cushion and this is where he stuck it. <laughs> Stick that a little deeper in there and we'll wait for Kyle to sit on it. So I wanted to take a moment to show you guys the up close shots of all of the clutter and all of the mess and all the things on the counter and you know just in the living room before we get started just because I want you to know that you are not alone if you are struggling with you know a messy house or extra clutter whatever the case may be you are definitely not alone in that. I actually got so overwhelmed the other day. I was sitting in my office working on a video and I was looking around me and I just saw all the things that I needed to tackle, all the things that had been on my to-do list that I just haven't gotten around to doing. And it kind of made me have like a mini, not a breakdown, I feel like that's very intense, but it was like a silent, I don't know, overwhelm, I guess. And I just had to stop what I was doing and start going through everything. I had to clear things out of my office and just make my space more peaceful. And there can come a point where the things that you have and the things that you want and the things that you've desired can become overwhelming to you. And that's exactly what it was doing to me. It was totally stealing my joy. So I used to actually declutter all the time. I would declutter at least once a month. I would just kind of go through the house and declutter things. And over the years, I've just become busier and busier. Life has gotten more hectic. Of course, you know, there are lots of different struggles that we all face and I have not been immune to that. And so with that being said, I feel like now I have to kind of plan out my declutters a little bit more. Like I'm not just impromptu decluttering as much, but I have definitely been feeling a big overwhelm lately, just overwhelm in a lot of things. And I'm a person where if I feel like my space is being overtaken, it just clutters my mind mentally as well. I really don't want to continue feeling this way through my favorite seasons that are coming up. And so I think I'm going to basically just be doing a big declutter throughout my entire house. I don't have a full on plan on how I'm going to do it, but I know it has to get done. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. If you're not, that's fine. I will just do that on my own. But if that's something that could help you, if that's something you're interested in seeing, I can definitely share some decluttering videos. And I'm sure I would even have enough to do like a full on mini decluttering series. Let me know if you're interested in that and I will for sure share it with you guys because I am in dire need of that and I want all that peace to come before the season is over and I feel like I missed out on all the things I wanted to do anyway.
A while ago, I shared a video with a lot of new to me cleaning products and cleaning tools, and it was really cool to be able to try things out all in one video and just share my thoughts on everything. Some I loved, some were not so great, but over the years, I have tried out so many cleaning tools, cleaning products, and I have some that are my ride or dies. They are ones that are must-haves in my cleaning arsenal, if you will. And then there are others where I'm like, eh, I would pass. I would save your money on these ones. They're not really going to benefit you that much. So let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video where basically I can just go through and tell you my all-time favorite cleaning products and tools and the ones that I think are really worth the hype and worth the money. As you know, we are decorating for Halloween today, and I just am curious how many of you actually decorate for Halloween, or are you just kind of checking out what we're doing around here? Do you decorate for fall first? Do you decorate for Halloween second? Do you not decorate for Halloween at all? I feel like decorating for Halloween is kind of hit or miss. I would say for us, we always decorate for fall. Fall is one of my favorite seasons. It's my favorite time of year, and I just love all the cozy, warm, cute, pretty, beautiful colors and decor pieces that you can put out but my kids love Halloween they think it's so fun I think it comes second to Christmas for them so when I do decorate for Halloween which is maybe like every other year or so it seems my kids love it that is one of their favorite things for me to decorate for just because it's so fun and I don't do anything gory or really intense I just do kind of the cutesy a little spooky but still pretty fun and lighthearted Halloween decorations and this year I'm actually not taking down my fall decor I might be kind of replacing a few pieces but for the most part I'm just kind of sprinkling in that Halloween decor and I'm really excited to show you guys how it turned out because it's just totally a vibe now it totally feels like Halloween yet I didn't have to say goodbye to all of my pretty fall decor so we are kind of decorating for following if you will Clearly, you can see what we're doing here. We are about to clean our back glass doors. They always are smudged. The clean glass really doesn't last that long, but I wanted to show you a quick hack that I've been using to clean my windows. So you're just going to grab a Swiffer mop and then take a microfiber cloth. This is the cloth that I use and I will have it linked down below along with any of the other things that I'm sharing in today's video. But all you're gonna do is basically take the edge of the cloth and squish it into the Swiffer head. And then I'm just using the spray away glass cleaner Cleaner to spray on the window and the great thing about this is you don't have to grab a chair or a stool to stand on or anything you can get the tip top of your windows doors or mirrors perfectly clean without having to do a ton of extra work for it this hack I actually shared in that video that I was talking about earlier I shared a ton of the cleaning products and even some hacks and things like that but I've been using it ever since and I've loved it so much this door is almost 20 years old so it's very scratched but it is very clean now. And would you just look at those fall vibes out there? <laughs> 
Just kidding. Get with it, Arizona. We are not having any kind of fall vibes outside. However, we are actually cooling down to the 70s in the evenings, and I am 100% planning to be bringing a jacket to the boys' practice once the sun goes down because it's getting downright chilly here in Arizona <laughs> now that we've gotten like extra soft, and I am definitely a person that is just always cold, so Arizona suits me very well. Okay, so I pulled out the Halloween decor. I have some, it's just really been like little bits and pieces that I've grabbed over the years. But I had these old pumpkins, like nothing fancy about them. They're just the ones you can pick up from Walmart or Target. I'm not in love with bright orange <laughs> aesthetic on them. And I feel like this is just going to kind of clash with everything else that I have going on, especially because I'm not fully decorating for Halloween. I'm decorating fall, like following. That's what we're doing. We're doing like following. <laughs> and so, and then also you can see maybe there are just some nicks and scratches and paint coming off of the pumpkins. So I'm going to elevate these a little bit, make them fit into our everyday decor and just kind of make them the vibe that I'm wanting. So what we're going to do is actually just take whatever kind of acrylic paint you have and then I'm also going to mix that with baking soda, sprinkle on baking soda, like kind of make it a bit messy. It'll give us a lot of texture and it's kind of gonna be a dupe for those really, really expensive jack lanterns that you see. I'm just not gonna spend that much money on those. It's kind of crazy. So we are going to make our own. Now that the kitchen was all clean, I did want to get a simmer pot going. You guys know I love simmer pots. So for this Halloween simmer pot recipe, you're going to need pumpkin pie spice, cinnamon sticks, cloves, vanilla extract, orange, and of course water. So all you have to do for this is go ahead and slice up your orange and then you just add everything right into your pot or mini slow cooker as I'm using. Now if you are like me and you forget that you have things going on the stove and you just let all of that water evaporate and get really close to ruining your pots you need this mini slow cooker it has been amazing i've been having it on every single day ever since getting it late last week and it also makes it just really easy to continue using your simmer pot recipe that you have in there i just turn it off and pop the lid on at night and in the morning you can add any new water that you need take off the lid and you're good to go and it'll last for several days about 6 
6.30. Kyle ended up taking the boys to football practice tonight. Liam's actually upstairs just playing and it gave me some time to let these dry and then of course I went outside and spray painted them just to make sure that they were fully covered in black without having to use and spend a ton of time dabbing on that paint. But I love the texture of these pumpkins. It's so pretty. Luke saw them. He was actually helping me bring them in and out. And he was like, I love these more than if you just bought like black pumpkins at the store. And I could not agree more, especially being kind of like spooky and Halloween. And then I wanted to show you guys, I printed out some more prints just from Walgreens, but I got these digital downloads on Etsy as I normally do. And I wanna show you guys this one, let me turn it around. Okay, so we have this cute cat. So fun, because you guys know we have a bunch of cats. This ghost, a haunted mansion or a haunted house. You guys know that trend that's going around where you can paint the little ghost on like a fall setting? Well, this one just came like that and I thought that was so cute. <laughs> Definitely a lot more cutesy, but we'll put some of those in frames. And then these are the pumpkins and how they turned out. I just am so happy with how they turned out. These totally look like something I would buy at the store for Halloween, but I would expect to pay a lot more than I did whenever I bought them. So for Halloween, I think most all of it, except I got this little pillow from Walmart this year. And I also got these little ghost thingies from Walmart. And, oh, I got this pillow actually at TJ Maxx earlier this year or like earlier in the season, I just saw it and fell in love with it. And then that pumpkin's from Walmart this year, but everything else is from previous years. This I got either last year or the year before, but I didn't end up decorating for Halloween like I thought I was. So I'm excited to use that this year, but everything else is just kind of like accumulated over the years and we'll kind of see what we can come up with. Usually whenever I decorate for a season, I will pull everything down, I'll deep clean the shelves, and I'll decorate for scratch. But this time, like I had mentioned, I am just trickling in Halloween. So instead of taking down everything and starting from scratch, I am just pulling some things down and then kind of adding in a few Halloween touches. Plus the dust and cobwebs kind of add to the spooky feel, right? Here I'm just adding in one of those prints that I downloaded from Etsy and I had just got this printed off from Walgreens, but I do like to put the more detailed prints lower on the shelves. That way it's just easier to see all the fun details. You guys, Halloween decorating can be as easy as changing out some fall florals for some branches that you might even find in the yard. And then also these bats, you can honestly add them to anything. You can add them to a simple wall. You can add them to a vase like I'm doing here. You can put them over a mirror. There are just so many different ways to decorate for Halloween and you can do it in a very subtle way. This one I love because it gives a big impact for a very low cost. I talk about this all the time, but thrifting is such a great way to decorate for the seasons on a budget. Like we did earlier with painting those pumpkins, you can definitely find pumpkins at your thrift store and paint them or DIY them in a way that fits the season and fits your aesthetic. Another thing is finding frames like this to add in your own prints. I typically will get my prints from Etsy. They just have a ton to choose from and they're just a couple of dollars each 
and then you can get them printed out and add them to whatever frames you have. And even if you see a frame at the thrift store that you don't love, keep in mind you can always take the glass out and just paint it and make it whatever you're wanting it to be. I love these cute ghosts. I think they are so adorable and I love that as soon as the boys saw them They immediately said they were three little ghost brothers So they said the biggest one was Luke the middle one was Liam and the smallest was Noah and I thought that just made him even cuter All right, so spider webs like this you can get this glow-in-the-dark one like I have or you can get the regular one I think it's like a dollar cheaper if you don't do the glow-in-the-dark These are another item that are just like the bats They make such a big impact, but they're very affordable and very simple and you can just kind of drape them around anything And immediately get that spooky Halloween feel and they're also really easy to pack away Use for the next year and it gives you a ton so you can do this all around your house or just buy a bag and have it for years and years You'll see here in just a minute, I'm gonna change out this tray for something Halloween, but I asked him if he liked the fall style tray or the Halloween style tray. And at first he said he liked the fall flowers and I was like, oh, I'm really surprised you didn't pick the Halloween one. And he said, um, actually I like the dead flowers. <laughs> and it just made me laugh so hard at his response. He's hilarious. Okay, so I shared this on a reel last week, but you can completely change out your centerpiece really really simply by just adding a few things so i have like a neutral base right here and then i have a neutral vase some candlesticks and then for fall i just had some fall florals a kind of warm candle which by the way this soft cashmere amber smells so good and then i had a terracotta pumpkin this one actually can hold a tea light but anyway i shared a reel about this last week but so simply you can just Take out your fall pieces. And then I'm just adding in some branches. You could honestly forage these, but you can also order them online if you live somewhere like us where there are not a lot of branches on the ground. And I'm just going to fill up the vase with some branches like this. And then I'm changing out that candle for just a dark black one. This one's a red apple and cedar, and it's a wood wick. It smells so good. And then, you're just gonna add this cute little jack-o-lantern. This one actually lights up. And then just like that, you have a fall tray, fall tablescape, whatever you wanna call it. But how pretty is that? I'll go ahead and put that away. But typically, we have our fruit on the table, but I feel like lately it hasn't been getting eaten as much. And so I'm actually going to move it over to this section and then I can actually have my table nice and styled. I typically like to keep my counters very functional, but I also like to add a few things in just to make them feel fun and seasonal. So I am just adding in a few different things around the kind of the edges of the countertops. That way I'm not taking away any functionality from the kitchen because I am in the kitchen all the time cooking for our family. And the last thing I wanna do is just be bumping into all the decor. But another thing that I did that I've actually done in years past is I drew on some little jack-o'-lantern faces onto our oranges. And that's something you can do so quick and easy. And honestly, it's fun if you include the kids on this one too. Another thing that I've been doing forever is changing out my kitchen towels for the seasons. It's such a functional and simple way to change up your seasonal decor. So these ones are, of course, from Bloom Towels. You guys know I'm obsessed with Bloom Towels, and I've just been collecting them over the years. These ones are actually from last season's Halloween launch, and I picked them because the other ones from their Halloween launch are actually in the wash right now. But they just did a surprise second Halloween launch for the year. And those ones are so fun and whimsical. So I will have a little overlay right here so you can see what they look like, but they just have a ton to choose from. So if you don't have some Halloween towels, I would definitely suggest looking into Bloom Towels. They have some really cute ones. And as always, if you use my code AMANDA, that will save you 15% on your entire order.
These little ghosts are less than $4 at Walmart and they're really so fun for the kids. They're definitely not something that I would just pick if I were decorating my house for myself. However, the boys thought they were so fun and it was actually really neat because Noah had just got home from practice and Liam had come downstairs and they were both so excited to see all the Halloween popping up around the house. So I immediately wanted to include them in this and they just kind of helped me hang up the bats and then Noah went in the living room with me and kind of helped me along with the rest of the decorating. Every time I decorate my house, I always try to find a balance between the beautiful decor that I love and the fun decor that my kids love and something that kind of makes them excited too because they live here too and I always want our home to feel fun and comfy for everyone that lives here. So that's probably the biggest reason that I chose to decorate for Halloween. It is kind of fun for me too, but really it's something that the kids get so excited about and I know when they get older, I'll just be decorating for fall for Kyle and me and I'll definitely end up missing all these ghosts and jack-o'-lanterns. Here, I just wanted to show you guys how everything kind of turned out once we were all done putting all the Halloween decorations up, but stay tuned because I'm going to share a recipe in just a minute and it's so yummy. All the boys have been begging me to make it again <laughs> because it got devoured very quickly, but I love how everything turned out, specifically the shelves. And I think the spider webs really made the shelves just feel so spooky and extra festive and those little ghosts. Oh my gosh, I love those so much but it's really fun to see just how you can kind of accumulate things over the years and how simple it is to put them together and just create a whole feeling and a whole vibe. I'm really happy that I was able to keep a lot of my really pretty fall decor up, but also be able to incorporate the things that the boys love too. But let me know in the comments, which area was your favorite that we decorated today? And also I wanted to mention, even though a lot of these things were from previous years, if I can find links to anything that's still available, I will definitely link it down below. And if you're curious on where something was from, just let me know in the comments and I'll let you know that way you can hopefully find something similar for yourself, even if they're not still selling that specific item. I wanted to show you guys how to make these delicious peanut butter oatmeal cookies. First, we're going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees, and then you're going to need some rolled oats, some cinnamon, peanut butter, sea salt, baking soda, maple syrup, vanilla extract, some fun Halloween sprinkles if you want to make this like a Halloween cookie, some mini chocolate chips, and then two eggs. And of course, I have my recipe card to make it extra easy. You can go ahead and screenshot this, print it out, save it to your phone, whatever makes it easiest on you and then you can just always have this recipe really easy access. Luke was unfortunately still at football practice. I feel like he just has a ton of really long practices, but thankfully he loves football so much, so it doesn't feel like a really difficult thing to him. But since Liam and Noah were home, they wanted to help me make these cookies, and I pretty much never will say no to help in the kitchen. And I love when it's for something fun like this, because I feel like the boys are always going to be remembering these moments, and hopefully it can be something that they can look back on and just smile. And of course, everyone had to take a turn plopping the cookies onto the cookie sheet because that is, after all, the very funnest part about making cookies. To bake these, you are just going to pop them in a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes. And then I personally like to smash them down with a spatula or a fork just to kind of get that flatter cookie. These are not going to be really crunchy cookies, but they are so good. And I love that there's no refined sugar in them or anything, and they actually don't even have flour in them. So they just taste like an oatmeal peanut butter cookie, which I guess is what they are, but they are a hit and the boys are begging me to make some more.
Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Let me know in the comments if there's any video requests that you might have for this coming month. If you are not already subscribed, I would absolutely love if you decided to subscribe and join the family. And I will see you in the next video later this week. Bye guys.